The Inflataplane, developed by the Goodyear Aircraft Company, was an unconventional aircraft that achieved its goals. It could be easily stored in a small container and transported by truck, jeep trailer, or aircraft. One possible use was to airlift the container behind enemy lines, providing stranded pilots with a chance to rescue themselves. Tests were conducted on both single-seat and two-seat versions until the 1970s, but no orders were placed. Twelve inflataplanes were created, including the single-seat GA468 model. It could reach a service ceiling of 10,000 feet and travel up to 390 miles, with an endurance of over six hours. Inflation of the aircraft took about five minutes, and the pilot would manually start the two-stroke engine. The dual-seat version had a range of 275 miles. Aviation engineers have long been intrigued by the idea of building a plane or glider made of rubber that can bounce upon crash landing instead of braking. The first attempt to create and fly an inflatable rubber glider, followed by a rubber-powered plane, came about after a tragic crash in a Brazilian jungle after World War I. This unfortunate event resulted in the death of Taylor McDaniel's friend and collaborator, inspiring him to consider making a plane out of inflatable rubber tubes to protect both passengers and the pilot in case of accidents. After returning to the United States, McDaniel worked diligently on his idea for several years and eventually obtained a patent for an inflatable rubber tube glider. On January 4, 1931, the glider successfully took flight twice. Joseph P. Bergling, a skilled glider pilot and a friend of McDaniel's, made some adjustments to the controls and flew the glider four more times that day. A week later, on January 11, McDaniel organized another test flight, which included a media demonstration for newsreel agencies, journalists, and photographers. The glider was towed by a truck and reached a height of 100 feet. However, the pilot encountered some control issues during the flight but was able to land safely. Despite initially wanting to end the demonstration and return the glider to his workshop for control system modifications, McDaniel was convinced by a photographer to make another attempt. During this flight, the glider reached an altitude of around 80 feet before the pilot lost control. The right wing struck the ground almost vertically, causing it to fold. However, upon impact, the wing returned to its original shape, and the glider was mostly undamaged. The pilot sustained minor injuries, including a bruised heel and a twisted knee. After examining the crash site, it was determined that the accident resulted in the breakage of a single wire, which only cost 50 cents to repair. Taylor McDaniel, a passionate airplane enthusiast, used parts from his initial aircraft to create a bird-shaped inflatable rubber tube glider. Unfortunately, his progress was hindered by financial constraints, especially due to the Great Depression in the early 1930s, which made it extremely difficult to secure funding for further development. Taylor McDaniel passed away in 1952 at the age of 61, remaining steadfast in his belief that his vision for an inflatable airplane was fundamentally feasible. Meanwhile, in the Soviet Union, innovators designed and flew a glider made from lightweight rubberized canvas with the intention of cost-effective supply delivery to Siberia. These cargo-laden gliders could be towed by a single large plane, enabling three gliders to be transported to their destination. Once the gliders reached their destination, they would be released to land and unload their cargo. They could then be deflated, packed into compact cases measuring 39 by 39 by 19.5 inches, weighing just 169.4 pounds when loaded, and transported back for reuse. The initial flights of these gliders yielded positive results, prompting the project leader, P.I. Grachowski, to envision an even more advanced model. However, the further developments of this project remain obscure as they didn't feature prominently in the documented Soviet military history. During the early 1950s, British engineers had the goal of creating an airplane that could be stored in a deflated state on a submarine, truck, or tank. Their aim was to have a plane that could be easily stored and quickly inflated for missions such as reconnaissance and rescue operations. To achieve this, the ML Aviation Company conducted flight tests in 1955 for a groundbreaking aircraft at Farnborough. Named the ML Light Aircraft Mark I, this plane featured a large inflatable wing coated with rubber. 
The fuselage, made of wood and shaped like a box, was relatively small. The aircraft had tricycle landing gear, a two-seat cockpit, and a 60-horsepower engine located at the rear. The 40-foot wing of the aircraft did not have internal bracing and relied solely on air pressure to maintain its rigid aerodynamic shape. Test pilots were pleasantly surprised by how easily maneuverable the compact plane was, and it performed well in flight. The controls were as simple as those on a motorcycle's handlebars. After use, the wing could be deflated, stored in a bag, placed inside the compact fuselage, and then attached to a vehicle for transportation. Despite its potential for military and civilian applications, the project did not progress beyond the experimental phase. The Inflataplane, which was developed by the Goodyear Aircraft Corporation in 1956, is considered the most successful version of the inflatable rubber aircraft concept. Created at the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company's Wingfoot Lake Airship Base in Ohio, this model, known as the GA-33, was designed, built, and flying within just over 12 days. The wing, tail assembly, and pilot seating were made from Goodyear's innovative air mat fabric. This material was a groundbreaking combination of rubber-coated nylon fabric layers connected by multiple nylon threads. This complex structure gave the air mat one of the best strength-to-weight ratios among construction materials. The aircraft's body was made from airship fabric reinforced with fan-shaped patches of rubberized material. These patches served as anchor points for struts and metal supports that connected the landing gear and pilot seating area to the rest of the plane. A 40-horsepower engine, positioned on top of the wing in a typical tractor layout, powered the GA-33. Furthermore, an engine-powered air compressor ensured the airplane stayed inflated by supplying the necessary low air pressure to maintain its rigidity. The results of the tests were so impressive that Goodyear decided to make 10 more inflataplanes. They received support from the Army Transportation Corps and the Office of Naval Research. The new model, called the GA-468, had several upgrades. The engine was improved from 40 horsepower to 60 horsepower, which allowed for better takeoff capabilities. In addition to the structural improvements, the GA-468 also had a versatile landing gear that could be used on land, water, and snow. This meant that there was no longer a need to adjust the landing gear for different surfaces. Goodyear also came up with a parachute drop container for the deflated inflataplanes. This container was designed to be used as a rescue option for pilots who were stranded in enemy territory. Meanwhile, the Army Transportation Corps started working on a two-seater inflataplane while the GA-468s were being evaluated. The final model, known as the GA-466, had a 60-horsepower engine and could reach a top speed of 69 miles per hour. It could travel up to 230 miles. The Inflataplane was created with the main purpose of being a rescue vehicle that could carry one or two people. It was designed to be quickly sent to pilots who were stranded, easily inflated, and prepared for flight in just six minutes. It was also envisioned to be used for aerial reconnaissance and assisting with ground missions. During the development and experimental stages, the Inflataplane showed promising results. In August 1959, Goodyear unveiled designs for an improved version of the Inflataplane that had smoother aerodynamics, a 100-horsepower engine, an enclosed cockpit, and four fuel tanks mounted under the wings. However, in June 1959, an incident occurred. An Army pilot, during the final 35 minutes of a required flight, performed extreme maneuvers that were not part of the test plan. As a result, the wing of the inflataplane was subjected to excessive stress, causing it to bend into the propeller and create a rupture, which led to a loss of air pressure. Sadly, during a test flight, Light Pug Wallace lost his life when an aircraft malfunction occurred. A control cable beneath the wing became dislodged from its pulley, causing the joystick to jam. This resulted in the plane spiraling out of control and one of the wings folding, getting caught in the propeller. The loss of air caused erratic wing movement and an aluminum wing tip struck Lt. Wallace, leaving marks on his helmet. He was then ejected from the aircraft and fell into a shallow lake. Tragically, he did not deploy his parachute, possibly due to being rendered unconscious from the earlier impact. In 1959,
Goodyear stopped production and definitively abandoned the Inflataplane project, as confirmed by a company representative. The unique air mat fabric used in the Inflataplane's design is no longer manufactured by Goodyear. One Inflataplane is now housed in the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., while another can be found at the Franklin Museum in Philadelphia. The first GA-33 prototype Inflataplane was gifted to the Ohio Museum of Flight at the International Airport in Columbus, Ohio. However, the journey of the aircraft to the museum is surrounded by mystery. Despite being intended for disposal in a landfill, it somehow ended up at Barber Airport in Alliance, Ohio, discreetly stored in a hangar until it was eventually donated to the museum. With the museum now closed, the GA-33 is located somewhere in the vicinity of Columbus. Tests conducted at Goodyear's Wingfoot Lake facility in Akron, Ohio, showed that the aircraft could be inflated with as little as 8 psi, 544 bar, of pressure, even lower than that of a standard car tire. Unfortunately, the flight test program was marred by a tragic accident that claimed the life of Army aviator Light Pug Wallace. While executing a descending turn, a control cable beneath the wing became dislodged, resulting in the loss of control of the aircraft. The intensity of the turn caused one of the wings to fold over the propeller, causing severe damage. The subsequent loss of air led to uncontrolled wing flapping, and one of the wing's aluminum tips struck the pilot's helmet.